have seen a flying saucer. You've seen one? Yes, well, definitely. Unidentified aerial phenomena. To cover up our mistakes. I've met people who swear they've seen Bigfoot. <laughs> Join us for a journey into the obscure. You are now listening to The Wow Pod. All right. Welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome. So, um, today we, uh, well, we're recording, but... um, we are uh, babysitting today as well. So it's a baby might, cast. It might be a jump take cast because um, if the baby needs our attention, we will <laughs> uh, give her our undivided attention. But we've got a, Betsy's got a fun show for us today. Yeah. This show, um, it's interesting. It bothered me in many ways. I, I ignored the subject since she told me about it. Just so <laughs> Don't check into this. You've got to hear this story. Shocked and amazed. Mm. But uh, first we cover some news, as always. <sighs> but let's, uh, Weird news. Let's start out. Remember, we've switched over to um, the wild pod on your, uh, on your podcatchers. So go there to find us. And uh, this, we may put this one and the last one up under Weird Obscure World, and then that'll be it. It'll be over for that for one. the Weird Obscure World. Yes. Yeah. It, it's still us. Yeah, it's still us, but it's too hard to spell. <laughs> people had a hard for time. E. <laughs> yeah, people had a hard time mm-hmm. finding it. And, the Wow Pod is easier to merchandise too. I've been working on T-shirts. We've now got a couple T-shirts up in our merchandise store. Oh, good! On our web page and uh, Weird Obscure World podcast. You got to get really small with the print and the typeset. You can't do much mm. with it, but the Wow Pod much easier. Yeah, much easier. Yeah, much easier. So All for right. for those of you viewing on YouTube, um, there's a pretty gruesome picture that's been up. Uh, it hasn't been up yet. I'll put it oh, up okay. right now. So he's going to share this, and this is this takes us to my weird news story for the week. All right. Okay. Um, There's, it's a it's a headless it's a, chicken. It's a chicken that just has a scab on top of its neck. Okay. It's sad, but as gross as this story is, you have to hear it. A chicken in Thailand lived for over ten days after its head was chopped off. Okay. And in the Tell process, us the names of the towns, Betsy. <laughs> it looks like it's Ratchaburi Province. So probably you just said that Ratchaburi. Ratchaburi I Province. I tripped all. I would have. <laughs> that would have wrecked me. That's what it looks like, but it, it may be pronounced differently. At any rate, he's become this celebrity of sorts because he's a headless chicken, um, and uh, the headless chicken was found in the Ratchaburi province in central Thailand by Supkadi Arun Thong, or Tong, probably. How long have you been practicing? I know, right? I'm getting good. Sup, Supkadi Arun Thong, a so local this, vet. So it's not like they cut the head off for a spectacle. Right. It's suspected However, that it had been attacked by another animal. But it was headless. This vet does something... Um, strange i would say um unorthodox instead of i don't know i don't know what you do with a headless chicken maybe study i don't know i don't know at any rate this vet gives it antibiotics Mm -hmm. to prevent its wound from getting infected and fed it by dropping food down its exposed neck stayed alive 10 days who needs a head well apparently that thing did (laughs) So despite being decapitated, the bird was able to survive due to the fact that a chicken brain is uh, is at an angle, meaning that if their head is chopped off right at the neck, the rear part of the brain is still there. Like so the, you have to go lower down the neck. 
Mm-hmm. The way that it's positioned, it's at the back of the skull. So it's right there on the... Right. So it apparently still had some of its brain, which controls its breathing. Do we so, want to watch some of this video? I I haven't watched it. Um, you could play it for the, the viewer's okay. entertainment. No. But, okay, while this is loading, let me just caveat this by saying this isn't the first time a chicken has been recorded living without a head. Mike the chicken survived for 18 months without his head. Mike the chicken. Mike? They named it Mike? They named the chicken Mike. 18 months. Look at the chicken just... (gasps) Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's just not right. It's a headless chicken, like what the meerkat says in that cartoon. Can't just walk around like a headless chicken. Oh, that's sad. But, yeah, but strange. It yeah. definitely qualified as weird news. And I'd never heard of Mike the Chicken. I must know more about Mike the Chicken. But they figured that this, in fact, was a an animal attack. Um, mm. Yeah. Well, I've got two stories. All right, what you got? Uh, they're both from Switzerland because Switzerland is uh, bringing it crazy lately. It's the Swiss. Not just known for their chocolate. So, in Switzerland, they've uh, a coffee shop, a cafe, a Fellatio, Fellatio Cafe has opened up. Fellatio? Like, Fellatio. Yes. Okay. Yes. Checking. Um, so, uh, <laughs> it's called Fellatio Cafe, and it's in Geneva, Switzerland. You can get a hot cup of joe. With the side of uh, of no fellatio, no, <laughs> no. Oh, what if what if people like going to a business meeting <laughs> accidentally walk into this one, not reading Swiss, and well, they just go in there that escalated down quickly <laughs> and get coffee, and all of a sudden. <laughs> Like five businessmen. Oh God! <laughs> oh. oh, well, yeah. it would become their new favorite place. So, yeah, the Swiss are getting kind of weird. They're going through some kind of revolution. Go. I've got another one from Switzerland. There's a new restaurant in Switzerland. Are they nude? Everyone? Yes, it's a nude restaurant. Why? Uh... Why? Now, this one's in uh, Reb Gassi. Okay. Uh, Reb Gassi 39, I guess that's what it says. But uh, it was once a uh, LGBT cl- club. Okay. But now you go there, and in the coat room, you strip off your clothes, and you go inside. Now, they won't be serving any of those hot skillets in there. No, I don't imagine. Because like the ones you get at Denny's or whatever. Yeah. Because <laughs> that comes sizzling and popping grease. That could get kind of sketchy. But yeah, Switzerland is uh is bringing the uh the uh alternative eating. Yeah, in both counts. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Uh. Okay, on to our main story. Okay, I'm going to try to get this out, creating the most kiss, cohesive storyline as I can. It kind of jumps around, um, but I'm going to take it back. First of all, we're going to talk about tickling today. Okay. When you think of tickling, do you, what, what do you automatically think of? I don't know. Like good, bad, fun, not fun. Well, it depends. Is it you know like a older brother tickling you, <laughs> or is it a romantic tickling? Okay, so today, um, I I came across a list of documentaries, a must see list of documentaries, and this started me down the rabbit hole. So I started doing research into tickling. Well, tickle torture is historically 
something that's been used since it, it left no marks and the victim could recover relatively easily and quickly. So the Spanish Inquisition. The Chinese used tickle torture. The, another example was in ancient Rome. I'm starting to like the Chinese more and more <laughs> if that's their torture. In ancient Rome, a person's feet were dipped in a salt solution and a goat was brought to lick the solution off. And this type of torture would start out as tickling, but eventually become extremely painful. As the goat went through as, the skin? As the goat, because they're goats, they eat anything, including feet, apparently, if they're dipped in enough salt solution. There was a man prosecuted in uh, Flossenburg concentration camp during World War II who witnessed Nazi prison guards perform tickle torture on fellow inmate, um, followed by various other tortures. How which, does that go? Which actually how, how resulted does, in this guy's death. Gucci, Gucci, goo. <laughs> Denounce your whatever. Gucci, Gucci, goo. Oh. So the first game that the SS sergeant and his men played was to tickle their victim with goose feathers on the soles of his feet, between his legs, and I'll in the bet. armpits. I'll bet all those prisoners in Vietnam are jealous right now. Right. So torture by way of tickling has been around a long time. Now, in the book Sibling Abuse, as you mentioned, there was a published research. This guy, Vernon Y., published his research findings regarding 150 adults who were abused by their siblings during childhood. Tickling was considered and is considered a type of physical abuse that they experienced well yeah so i mean i i was the eldest sibling so it was mostly the cousins that got me the and it was revealed in this book i didn't read all of the book some of it's online available some of it's really dry but it was it was revealed during this book that abusive tickling is capable of provoking extreme physiological reactions vomiting incontinence losing consciousness well, we know about incontinence anyway so that started me down this road the person we're going to talk about today um first appeared during the aol times you know like they had America these chat online. rooms yeah they had these chat rooms prior to facebook like the cannibal chat room where the guy Right. Wanted to be eaten. The other guy wanted to eat, so they got together and. Yeah. Oh man, reading that story is the. Oh. Same thing. <laughs> but this one was a tickle chat room. This was a tickle chat room, and a prominent person started showing up in all of the chat rooms, calling herself Terry Tickles. Terry Tickles. So Terry Tickles starts to. Hang on. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Terry Tickles. Terry Tickles starts to um, request specific body types to perform tickling acts on one another and send them to her. And Was she, it really a her? Well, we'll get into that. She's paying fantastically for young male athletic people like uh, in the 90s she was paying two thousand dollars to fighters to watch two, to, dudes to watch two dudes tickle each other tie each other up and tickle each other so she's paying for this you know this pretty lavishly right this can't be a woman well a a porn producer um, is a part of these rooms and of course oh yeah and he says uh i can help you out no problem and they strike up a deal well he starts to find talent using his connections and starts to create these videos for terry tickles and he creates a library of hundreds of videos for terry tickles <laughs> now and then porn hub is born and about Two years into this relationship, um, one of his talent comes to him and says, listen, these videos are being leaked. Like, look what's happening. And he showed him this uh, 
Facebook page that was created with the talent's name, address, phone number, videos. So they were doxing the tickler and ticklees. So this Terry Tickles was starting to blackmail all of the talent who stopped working. Oh, my God. If they stopped working, she would go out. Oh, no, no. He would. He would. A girl wouldn't. Would a girl do creepy yeah. stuff like that? I can't imagine, but at any rate. Maybe she's like the Black Widow or something. She started to. I'm gonna, she killed her ninth husband and said, that's not enough. I'm going to call her a she because her her tag name was Terry Tickles. This but person, Terry can be a guy's name. Sure. Sure. She did she did say she was a female and she would go on to say that at times when um she wasn't in contact she had been sick in the hospital and and this porn producer goes on record as saying that he always figured that there was just something fishy because there was never any face-to-face -face contact but it hey, was money's always by money. email but money's money. So he gets a hold of Terry Tickles and says listen so-and-so, Bob, whoever the talent's name was, he doesn't want to do this anymore because um, you've, you're starting to, like, create these websites. He's, you know, his employer found out and so on and so forth. She then gets a hold of Bob and tells him, listen, you stop, you're going to regret it. And then she shuts down the um the computer systems at bob's work or at bob's college and blames it on bob she also puts bob on this automatic call um kind of like a computer and this computer starts calling Everyone Bob's no, Bob knows, his mom, his grandma, his cousins, his co-workers, his college mates, his college professors. And when they say hello, it says, did you know that Bob is a homosexual, that he's doing homosexual acts with other homosexuals online? He's openly gay. He's a fag. He's all of these horrible names. I mean, like, it was vicious. And Bob wasn't out? Well, Bob says he's not. That he was just doing these tickling videos because they paid well. Mm. So, this producer. And back then, I mean, nowadays, eh, whatever. But back then, it was uh, still kind of frowned upon. Well, and this producer reaches out to Terry Tickles and says, all right, that's it. We're done. Um, our, our relationship is over. Um, and uh, I, I can't work with someone who's not going to you know, respect the relationship that I have with my, with the talent because it's, it's ruining my reputation. Well, this Terry Tickles. Hold on, hold on. The porn producer said the words. Yes. Ruining my <laughs> reputation. Okay. As a just, producer. Just checking. So Terry Tickles then goes on to completely attack this porn producer. So this Terry Tickles sends handwritten letters to this producer's mom every day for months. Mm. It's, it's become an obsession. She sends letters every day for months saying, your son is a homosexual. Your son um, is doing horrible things. She even goes as far as to say things like, don't you wish it was this son that died versus your other son, Edward, because her older son had died. So this Terry Tickles goes nuts on this porn producer. This Terry Tickles sounds like a, soul, a psychopath. Yeah. So this producer hires a couple of private investigators, and they find Terry Tickles, mm -hmm. who is actually a guy by the name of... I knew it. I knew it. David D'Amato. David D'Amato. 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 David D'Amato. Now, David D'Amato is a uh, spoiled brat whose dad built and ran the most successful attorney or law office in the state of New York. Mm -hmm. And they find that... Uh, 
not only that, but he is a high school principal. Oh. Yeah. So this is where this story starts. Now. There's there's a little bit of a of sound going on, both from a puppy and a baby. And uh, we'll probably, we may have to do some cutting. We try to avoid that as much as possible. So this, this is where the story starts. So this creepy principal. Uh, okay. Yeah, as you can see the pictures. For those of you who are, who are uh, watching this on YouTube. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll show them now. So we got some pictures of him. Yeah, he's a... He looks like a walrus, maybe Jabba. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's got a Jabba-esque kind of look going on. He's a dirt bag. Okay, fast forward. So 1990, they get through all of that. These investigators find him. He's actually charged. So Oh, really? He's charged with um because he had created he had he had created Terry Tickles by using the social security number of a dead person. He'd created a new identity, mm. so to speak. And they charge him. And um, I mean, they charged him with the college incident where he shut down the college computers. They charged him with the phone harassment. They charged him with the email harassment. They charged him with felony uh theft of identity i mean he had like 42 charges or something in the beginning he got no time in jail Mm -hmm. house arrest Mm -hmm. for one year so that he could finish his law degree no kidding so that's where it's left off he kind of such a dirtbag he kind of goes silent or there's not a lot of information what he's doing. I'm sure he's still doing dirtbag things, but there's not a lot of information. Fast forward to 2016. Mm-hmm. David Ferrier, he is a he's famous for the um, the series on Netflix, a uh, dark tourist. Okay. Great series. He's a super upfront, easy to talk to journalist from New Zealand. And he likes to do quirky and odd stories. You see videos all over with him just kind of in the mix. Like if if there's a goat, he wants to be in petting the goat. If there's, you know, if it's a story about a pig, he wants to hold the pity pig. He's that kind of reporter. Just a, an all-around cool guy. So he starts doing some like investigation into like what story should I do next and he comes across an ad on Facebook and the ad says looking for competitive endurance tickling athletes (laughs) now he thinks it's clearly like this can't be real so he starts checking into it do you build the podium first (laughs) or while the tickling's going on is there a source to buy the medals? Okay, so first thing he does is look up, like, what is this? Videos, all, I mean, just everywhere online of endurance tickling. So he was like, well, now let me caveat this by saying David Ferrier is homosexual okay. openly. All right. So he's like, Okay, I've got, this is like pretty gay. Even I've got to check into this. <laughs> That's what he says. He's like. This is too gay for me. He was like, okay, this is, this is pretty gay. I got to check into this. <laughs> and he sends a letter to the company, Jane O'Brien Media, who is hosting these tickling events. And what he gets back within just maybe 20 minutes or so is this hostile email saying, listen. We will not work with homosexuals. They call him a fag kiwi, a gay. uh, I mean, they just, it was just unbelievably absurd, this email. And he was confused because he was like, listen, this is clearly a gay event. Why am I not 
you know, able to even report on it. Who cares if he's gay anyway? Exactly. And he, and he's oh, not, okay. it's not here's, a big thing for him. Question. You're going to host a man on man tickling <laughs> event. Right. And then disparage a homosexual man. Right. So I'll get into my theory on that. It's everybody's theory. You'll come to that. You'll come to the same theory by the end. Are of you going to, uh, it was a hostile response and it was so hostile that he, thought, okay, I'm going to take this off the list. The next day, he received another email. The next day, he received another email. It was disparaging, and they were attacking him. So they were coming from someone by the name of Debbie Kuhn, quote, unquote. Debbie Kuhn. Sincerely, Debbie Kuhn. You're a fag. Stay away, Debbie Kuhn. It's the same guy. It has to be the same guy. Shit now, bag. he had never heard of David D'Amato. He had never heard of the tickling incident. He had never heard of any of the charges, but he thought, okay, I'm a journalist. I got to find out what the crap is going on. Like, this is clearly a gay event. Am I being punked? So he blogs about this incident. And he's just, you know, he's got a really successful blog and he's asking his readers, like, am I reading into this? Like, does this look? gay to you like you all know i'm gay like why am i not a allowed to be a part of this the gay guy's asking <laughs> <laughs> all right all right <laughs> this is got, they've got the gay council up there <laughs> all, all in favor is this gay or not gay 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 uh, so after blogging about it he got gets a flamboyant guy puking in the corner because it's so gay <laughs> He gets a letter from Jane O'Brien sent to him, and it came like as fast as it could airmail. Now to New Jane O'Brien, Jane O'Brien Media, is who's hosting the tickling con. It the, it's Jane O'Brien Media. Debbie Kuhn is said she claims to be the spokesperson for Jane O'Brien Media. Okay. So he gets a letter from Jane O'Brien Media, the people who are hosting this, the ones he reached out to. Um, saying cease and desist, stop blogging about our event. And where was it held in a hotel? Here's the thing: they rent a farm. They rent buildings all over New York City, all over LA, and they hold these tickling events. Uh -huh. At any rate, they all come in with the like boxers. <laughs> so <laughs> the torch. He was, he was threatened so intently. This letter came from a really well-known, still well-known um, law office in New York City. A uh, Diamato law office? No. Diamato's lawyer, come to find out. The lawyer's lawyer. The lawyer's lawyer. He never got his bar. Okay, it gets stranger. All right, I've got a couple questions about lawyers. All right, I understand your job is to... Is to defend your your uh your uh, what do you call it your employer to the best of your ability but do you have to do it at a level to where you become seedy as well no there are really good lawyers out there i think that it's their it's, well, okay. it's how they make a living and so like mark garagos mark garagos however you say his name a good lawyer but like during the Michael Jackson crap, when he came out threatening the families, look, Michael Jackson is accused of diddling little boys. Why do you go after those little boys then? Right. And that's what he did. Now, because that's I don't how, want to disparage him, but that's how he continues to get paid. It's a nasty business to be in. It's like, I, it's like pawn shops. What would happen if maybe they started being held accountable for the crap they right. did? Right. And here's the thing. And, and that's, that's our whole justice system. Right. And Prosecutors need to be held accountable. Judges, if they commit a criminal act on the stand, it needs to be, uh, they need, I think, law enforcement even. The, the, if, if a crime is committed by someone who's an officer of the court or an officer of the state, the punishment should be thice sure. what it would be for a regular person. Sure. One, you should be held to a different at, standard. Yes, they should be held to a way different standard. Right. 
Well, they do it with teachers. If teachers fraternize with their students, they're held at a different standard yeah, than if just an adult. Are. Well, female, female teachers oh. in, have. In some cases. The problem is, is that behind closed doors, most dudes are high fiving each other over it. Sure. You know. At any rate, he gets this letter. It's a cease and desist. It comes from this actual attorney in New York. I, I, can you imagine that? <sighs> you quit blogging about it. Stop talking about the tickling event that we've posted on social media. I mean, so day, so. What David, would we do if we got a letter about a show we did? I don't know. I would go hard. I would go so hard. <laughs> I, I mean, because our show's just an opinion, kind of like his. So I, I don't know. Care. I would go so hard at them. This, like, if Scientology ever wrote me a letter, oh, oh I'd, I'd it's blow the on. Doors off of it. Yeah, I mean, what are if, they going to take from us, right? Any, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Put me in jail. I might start eating well. <laughs> I mean, it's. It was, it was such a threatening letter that David Ferrier's producer wanted to back out. Yeah. He was like, okay, listen, you're getting in too deep. You've upset someone. It's really hard to do a documentary about someone who doesn't want to be in a documentary. Um, that's more of an expose. They're frowned upon. I mean, all these reasons. But David Ferrier's um, crew that he worked with wanted to keep going. And so they're kind of throwing it back and forth when he gets a message the very next day that Jane O'Brien Media has sent three people, three representatives to New Zealand to speak with him in person. Like, this is a big deal. So they overnight three representatives from Jane O'Brien Media mm -hmm. to come and talk to David Ferrier. So David... Like to threaten him or... They to... did threaten him. Yeah. Yeah, like they, they told him, listen, you don't stop, we're all going to be fucked. And he, they even said that uh, friend of yours, Dylan Reeve, that was the other person, the director, the other director, they said he's got a young family. He's going to want to be around with his family. Ooh. Like they threatened him. They threatened his, his other producer. They threatened, I mean, the cinematography person they threatened him it was crazy they show up at the airport and david being funny makes this rainbow colored sign welcome to new zealand so he greets them he greets them at the airport dude i like this guy. now jane o'brien refused to tell him what time the flight was coming in david showed up at 4 a.m waited for out. every flight Hell every yeah. flight holding a sign and when three people recognized him because they had been doing their research on him. They knew what he looked like. They knew he was homosexual. They knew where he lived. I mean, this Jane O'Brien went crazy on this guy. So they show up, and the one guy just, you know, kind of shakes his hand. His name's Kevin, and he's super standoffish. Um, the younger guy that's with them, I can't remember what his name is, but he immediately notices the cameras and says, uh, are you recording us? But you're sweet and, ass. And David says, yes, yeah, a public place. In New Zealand, we're allowed to do that. We can record in public areas. And the Kevin, the, the mean guy that showed up, leans in and says, you don't want to do that. It's going to be a bad day for you if you do that. And he starts right at the airport threatening him. Really? Yes. So they meet later that night. They get him to their hotel, and they meet later that night. And David hides a recorder in a coffee cup uh -huh. and he records the entire conversation where this Kevin guy says to him, listen, there's a lot of money behind these tickling events. <laughs> you're messing with a straight face. He said all that. Yeah. You're messing with the wrong people. If you don't stop, we're all going to be fucked. He goes on to like full on tell him if he doesn't stop this, he's going to like, we could all be dead. So David, being the journalist that he is, says, who's this Debbie Kuhn? Have you ever met her? To which Kevin says, no, I've never met her. And so he looks at the other two guys and he's like, have you ever met her? Who is this lady? Do you know who you're working for? Have you seen the email she sent to me? And the other two said, listen, there's lots of people in high power that have, that have never met the people that work for them. All I know is they gave us a ticket and this is our job. We show up, you stop. Or they hire a goon. They hired like, three goons. Like you go on 
Craigslist. Now that's what they said. Goon for hire. However, what happens following this encounter, they come, they threaten, they leave. Uh, David Ferrier's like, nope, going to the U.S. Books oh, a yeah. flight. He books a flight to the United States and he shows up at the, the next um, advertised tickling event. And guess who's there doing all of the work? Those, those three oh. goons that showed up in New Zealand. They're the film crew. They've picked up. Now, we're not talking. So he just put, put three of his guys into, into goon suits and sent them, huh? So come to find out, this Kevin guy has a lot more to do with it than just goon. Uh-huh. He's like a, as the story goes on, we realize just how deep he is into this tickling. Is he the master of ceremony? <laughs> so... Okay, let me tell you about these people who go to these tickling events. Because while he's there, David Ferrier starts to kind of figure out what, what is going on. And he starts looking for people who have done these tickling that would be willing to go on camera and tell about their experience. Everyone says, no, nope, not going to do it, not going to do it, not going to do it, except for this MMA fighter. I'll give you a second. He's a well-known MMA fighter. You're shitting me. And he's in these tickling events? He was. Who? I can't remember his name. Son of a... <laughs> what? I'll, I'll find it. He was really well-known at the time. David Ferrier gets an interview with him where this MMA it, fighter says... You can't remember. That should have been written on your hand. <laughs> I don't watch MMA. At any rate, this MMA fighter says to him, um, listen... I had no idea what I was getting into. They said they were going to pay me $2,000. They were going to fly me to LA. They were going to, there was a tickling event. All I needed to do was lay down and be tickled. And he said, so? Chris, I, bad boy? Uh, yes. Yes. All right. So he does that. He goes to this event and he gets tickled now he says he knew something was up when he showed up and it was all dudes he said i instantly started like mm, nope this is not for me but he's like i signed up for it they flew me out there they paid me money i, I was like i wasn't making money as a fighter like this was a big deal mm -hmm. he's got a family and kids and so he's like okay fine how bad can it be so they strap him to this table and like three dudes climb on him and start tickling him and he said it was torture oh yeah it was absolute torture so after the event he just goes home and he just tries to wash it off like the guy you know crying in the shower <laughs> bleach he's boy george playing on the radio right so he thinks this is it one time event i'm never gonna have to deal with these people again and they it, upped the stakes. It was about two years later that they wanted him to come back, and he said, no, no. How about four? So, Ten grand. So first thing he noticed, because he said, I, he says, I check my, uh, I just check my name often because I play football, I'm an MMA fighter, and I just want to know what articles are out there. And he said, I typed in my name one day, and a YouTube video showed up. Of him being tickled? It was his tickling event. And so he immediately. Are they naked in this tickling? somewhat what do you mean somewhat it's not enough that youtube would pull it down but like they've got their shirts off and they're in small skimpy whatever also they're in like speedos so he sends a message to jane o'brien media and says listen i noticed this video's up you said it would never be published it that it was it was going to be a part of a a, a private thing that what no do one you would think this it. diamato's dad said when this came out i don't know <laughs> I don't know if his dad was even still alive at that point because guy. when they chased the money down, uh, this Diamato had like a $6 million inheritance that no. he was living off of. And that's what he was paying his goons with. Man. Sorry guys. The baby needs a minute of attention. We've got a dog and a baby in here that are both needy. So he notices this video 
on Facebook or on YouTube, shoots out a message. He gets nothing back. Jane O'Brien doesn't respond, doesn't uh, say sorry, doesn't take it down. He gets nothing. So he does what anyone would do, and he reaches out to YouTube and says, listen, they're using my video. They don't have permission. I want it down. YouTube complies and takes it down. The very next day, he gets an email, and he shows this email to David Ferrier during the documentary that says, you don't know who you're messing with, you don't know what you've done, and the harassment for this fighter starts. Oh. They build a website with his name on it. They, um, they put his name, his phone number, his stats. They contact his, his uh, family members, his current boss. He was coaching a high school football team at the time, and they sent letters to all the faculty saying, this guy's a homosexual. You don't want him coaching your boys. I mean, they, they set out to destroy him completely destroy him. And he goes on record with David Ferrier telling this story. Uh -huh. In the meantime, David Ferrier finds this tickling event and he tries to get into it. And they immediately, those three goons are there and they immediately throw him out, tell him we're going to call the cops and, and on and on and on. Now, David D'Amato has, has, the name has yet to be brought up. It's just Jane O'Brien Media and Debbie Kuhn. Now, Debbie Kuhn, they do research on Debbie Kuhn and find that Debbie Kuhn is the name of someone who had actually passed away. And the address that was given doesn't exist. So they know, okay, something is up. This has to be someone else. So David Ferrier hires an investigator to look into Jane O'Brien Media, and that's when they come across the name David D'Amato. David D'Amato leads them to his previous charges, which leads David Ferrier to um, the previous uh, porn producer. He interviews him, and he, the, inter the porn producer tells him about how he just harassed his family and friends and coworkers, and he set this porn producer up on that automatic call computer too. And that computer called every single person that was within six miles and gave his address and his name and said he was a homosexual and, I mean, all this crazy stuff. So, again, he gets back to New Zealand. He's still putting this together. And he gets a second and a third and a fourth cease and desist, cease and desist, cease and desist. So he reaches out to the law firm to find out like okay these are obviously legal threats however i don't have any dates i don't know what you know i don't have any discovery my lawyer doesn't have anything we've got we've got to, we've got some missing pieces here and i need to put it all together so he reaches out to this lawyer and the lawyer says uh i didn't send those the first one I sent, but he paid me to send a cease and desist. We've not filed anything. And he's like, well, this all has your name on it. And this David D'Amato, Jane O'Brien Media, Debbie Kuhn, whoever it is that's hired you, um, she, you know, they're putting your name, your header at the top. He's like, first of all, I don't know David D'Amato. I don't know Debbie Kuhn. And I don't know Jane O'Brien Media. I was hired by a guy named Kevin. Kevin was the one that flew to New Zealand mm -hmm. to send you the cease and desist letter. So with that, David Ferrier and Dylan Reeve, his co-producer, they are like, okay, it's a go. They create the documentary. It is, you got to watch it. It's on Netflix. It's on YouTube. Well, it's not on Netflix anymore. It was on Netflix. Now you can pay for it on YouTube. Um, it goes into all the details. The production is fantastic. Um, they started it uh, by doing a Kickstarter fund in June of 2014, and it was finished in late 2015. It was then debuted right here in Utah 
at the Sundance Film Festival. So at the film festival, <laughs> they're debuting this, um, this, this movie, Tickled, this documentary, Tickled. And in the audience is David D'Amato. Oh. And he... Is that where these pictures come from? <laughs> yes. So he's confronted because you're not allowed to take in any um, listening devices or recording devices because these premier, these premier films are likely going to go to picture show, big picture. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's widely watched. Well, David Ferrier had no idea he was there, but he was stopped by security in the foyer and um, said, listen, you, you can't have recording devices. It was thought that he had one in a cup and, and, and whatever, kind of like what David did in, in uh, New Zealand, David Ferrier did. So then David, David D'Amato just goes berserk on everyone in there saying, this is not homosexual. I'm not a homosexual you guys made this out to be something that it's not and security removes him. So <clears throat> David Ferrier's like, what the hell? It debuts the following week in LA and Dylan Reeve, David's co-producer is that, is that that one? Cause it's like Sundance film festival has one here and in LA mm -hmm. the following week, Dylan Reeves at that one. And Kevin, the goon that showed up in New Zealand, is there now Kevin stands up in front of the crowd during the question and answer section of this particular filming and goes on to talk about gay porn and he wants people he says quote unquote all male tickling videos are not to be are perceived as homoerotic there's no touching of genitals in his films. They are not for homosexuals. He goes off. I'd rather it was because, because when you're, um, if it's for the torture side, that's even worse. <laughs> I mean, uh, homosexuality is not bad, I mean, but yeah. the, the torturing is horrible. This is that Kevin guy. Yeah. So Kevin goes berserk. And David Ferrier and Dylan Reeve are both very open, like, yeah, let's have a conversation. They, the security wanted to toss him out because he was really being, you know, disruptive during the, the viewing. And, and the producers, David Ferrier and Dylan Reeve said, no, 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 we want him to stay. Like, is this we, that MMA fighter that got tickled? No, this is that particular portion of the show. We're showing on YouTube a clip from the movie. We're not showing a clip, just showing a picture. Uh, just showing a picture from the movie. Um, and David, that's just showing the, the tickle Dave, holder. David Ferrier went to see the went to see someone who creates these types of films to better understand like mm -hmm. who's your audience? Like am I crazy? This is gay, right? And the porn producer that still creates these fetish videos says, oh yeah it's, it's, it's a low level, you know homosexual porn that we create with these ticklish tickle videos because it's all men yeah and if it was all women it would be lesbian and if it was mixed exactly it would be, i mean it's but if you're watching them if you right now are watching this stuff because you like the torture aspect get checked out if you like the gay aspect carry on bro you know right so david damato and um, shows up at the film, the film festival here. This goon Kevin shows up at the film festival. Kevin's in, an old guy too. Yeah. He, he shows up at the film festival in LA and he starts, you can see there's an altercation between him and Dylan where he says, um, you know, you're not allowed to film me and uh, due to LA legislation and you know Dylan responds no we we've checked everything we're allowed to film in here and he's like well 
all I can say is you better get a lawyer. And Dylan says, well, you're not one. And he says, no, but I know one. And he said, well, David D'Amato's not one because we've checked his references. He never took the bar. He was like, well, he can in New York. He said, sure, he can take it anywhere, but he's never taken it. So it's this, this back and forth, and then Kevin just jumps in on him about how this is not homosexual. Like, that's all he cares about, is that this is being portrayed as gay. So Kevin thinks that he's getting ragged on because of, now, my only my issue with these people is the blackmail side. Correct, and that's what David's issue was. He was like, "Listen, we're not highlighting who's watching this. We don't. E we haven't even interviewed a single David's person." David's homosexual. He doesn't care. Yeah, he's like, "We don't care about your viewers. What we're concerned with is the fact that you attacked me, mm -hmm. started sending me fake." Um, how you attack the uh, actors? Or yeah, and then all of the talent or the people who joined in for these. They're all being attacked by someone. We we're trying to chase is that the what money. We call them as talent. I talent. call them actors. I don't know how much acting is done. <laughs> they like come and knock on the door dressed as a plumber, and then they go to get under the sink, and then they get tickled. I don't know how these shows work out, but you know. Yeah. So he goes. David Ferrer's not concerned at all and he goes on to explain that that th that's not what this show is about and everyone in the audience because if you've ever been to a film festival i have it's super casual they have and answers the, question and then answering the directors at the end. come out and tell you but i went and saw remember that descent yeah i saw that at the film festival it's called something else when it first came out and uh you know and then they came out and talked about it and the show was plenty freaky yeah, so they, it's really kind of impromptu and, mm -hmm. and informal. And so as this is going up, the crowd is finally, they've had enough of them. They're like, shut up. <laughs> and so he's, you know, continues to throw out these veiled legal effects, you know, or legal threats saying, well, this in a New York screen or in New York at a different screening, I'm going to do this. And, um, He's fixated on what he sees as a breach of ethics because he thinks that they're being they're portraying him as doing something homosexual, homoerotic. When clearly it is. Well, yeah, but so, the issue isn't that. Right. And that's it's not. The film is not about that. Those parts of the film are pretty uncomfortable to watch where he's kind of showing you what it's like. They're pretty uncomfortable to watch. However, even David Ferry was like, man, that was uncomfortable to film. You know, he's more concerned with the other side of the story, the blackmail, the money. Mm -hmm. So that's where the story ends. He chases down the money and finds that it comes from this David D'Amato who first entered this tickling scene as Terry Tickles and has gone on to use his family inheritance to absolutely decimate as many people who won't play along with his closeted homoerotic fantasies. Building an empire. David D'Amato passes away recently at the age of 55. How'd he die? Please, 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 please. <laughs> it, Kicked in the head by a horse. No, no, it, no. Um, <laughs> he... Oh, let me think. Bacterial infection. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> so, oh, 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 impacted bowels. No, no, hold on. Um, it doesn't say. It doesn't, nothing ever says how he passed away. It just says he passed away suddenly. It's probably a heart attack. So. Now, it doesn't end there, though, because even though he passed away, Kevin. Kevin continues. Kevin Clark. To file and trying to to defame, saying, you know, he was a he's a debunked journalist. He never amounted to anything. He's picking on us because he, you know, whatever. He he continues down this road. So David's like, all right, what else? And they're going, there's going to be another movie. Because they're calling him, they're calling David DeMotto the Tickle King. 
And so it's after the tickle king what, what happens. The they find prince. they find that much like Jeffrey Epstein, There's there are dozens of high dollar contributors to this Jane it's O'Brien an media. Underground tickle thing. It's an underground blackmail ring. And you have to be an up and coming athlete to even be able to take part in it. Mm. So, yeah. So they, they seek athletes. Yeah. You have to be 18 to 25 athletic and they pre-screen you to find out what you've done, where you're going, what your plans are, who you work with, all of that stuff before they'll let you be a part of it. Mm. Now, doing the research on this, I found an interesting connection. And there is a Jane O'Brien Media Facebook. Right now on Facebook. But if you go to the Jane O'Brien Media that's on Facebook right now, mm -hmm. I don't know if they're connected because it says it's um, owned by the LGBTQ community. And the Jane O'Brien Media. That's what, the, that's what the LGBTQ community should do is they should get in, take it over, dominate it. I think they have get into every one of those tickle fests, make sure that they're in control of it and run the, the new guy. What's uh Kevin Clark with an E run him out, send right. him down the road. So uh, but I, do it in a way to where you strip him of any dime he's ever made off of it. Right. And a call to arms, <laughs> take it, a call to arms for the LGBTQ Q, AARP community to get in there, take it over, and, and run them down. In the video, David Ferrier shows the original Facebook page. And in the original Facebook page, it was not owned by the LGBTQ community. So I don't know if they put that in following all of the hype about it, or if their website went down and this one came up in its place. I, you know what? My honest opinion is though, that, that, uh, that Kevin Clark and douchebag McConaughey and all those other dirt bags all changed the, yeah, changed it. So all of my friends in that community get in there, take it over and run this guy out. He's a total creep. But there's an yep. even more interesting twist. We're going to do a show on Luca Magnata. Oh. But oh. let me oh. let me just toss this I'm out there. I'm excited for that one, but cringe factor. Let me just toss this out there. Because I think all I think in weird ways all gross things are connected. When I'm doing the research for this tickled incident, um the thing that struck me first was the name Debbie Kuhn. I knew I had seen it somewhere. I had seen it somewhere. I had seen it somewhere. And then the attorney that was sending letters to David Ferrier, mm -hmm. I thought, why do I know that? So I Googled both and come to find out Luca Magnata had been receiving messages from Debbie Kuhn requesting specific videos like the one where he tickled and then cut the head off. He cut the extremities off of his boyfriend and mailed them yeah, to political Luca parties. Yeah, Luca Magnata is a creep. Yes. Well, well his first video was animal torture. Right. But well, let's not go too far into so, that. So without going too far into that, he was receiving messages from this same Debbie Kuhn that David Ferrier got messages from, or someone by the same name. I guess it could be a coincidence. And to go even deeper, dumb, his dumb, attorney, dumb. The, per, the lawyer who defended him in his trial, is the same lawyer that sent David Ferrier the one and only message, the cease and desist letter. So that lawyer, he's a creep too. Uh, Back well, to lawyers, he's, he's working for he's, bad guys. Well, we've got to do something about the legal system. Anyways, that's another show. I'd like to do a show on the justice system and 
how we can fix it. So there's too much money tied up in it. So when there's money involved, it gets twisted and good God. Now to this day, Kevin Clark Mm -hmm. says, I, uh, he says, I'm not, I can't go on record as saying David D'Amato is not a contributor, but I don't know if he is. It's plausible deniability. He says, I don't know him, blah, blah, blah. But he's clearly working for people who have quite a bit of money because he's flying all over the place. What if we, what if we like capture these guys and we give them over to tickle torturers? Right. Because at the end of the day, one thing is, is poignantly clear about these tickle videos and David Ferrier pointed it out is that it's only tickling for the first two or three seconds. Once you're trapped and they no longer stop, it is torture. And he says, it's hard to watch. Oh yeah. Oh man. Tickling. That's insane. So, and it's still ongoing. Yes, they do. They hold tickle events. I'm going to have to talk to my friends in the community. I think they need to uh, infiltrate. We'll start a, you know, a infiltration group, an LGBTQ so, plus infiltration group. They'll get in there. They'll take it over, and they'll make it uh, make it safe, and uh, maybe make a turn a profit off the deal. So to bring this full circle, what I believe. What I truly believe is that David D'Amato, coming from a wealthy firm, his dad started the D'Amato and Lynch firm. Um, Makes you wonder what Lynch thinks about this. Is Lynch still alive? His dad, David D'Amato's passed. I don't know. About, I don't about know about Lynch. Lynch. I don't know. Um, but he's just like pinching the bridge of his nose. God damn it! I think he was in the closet um and because of that he was just a nasty human being Mm. trying to feed feed his desires without anybody knowing and using his money to do that i'm glad now that it's a safer environment for people to not have to be in the closet yeah you know so he died uh march 13th 2017 at the age of 55 Mm -hmm. and his obituary is pretty disgusting if you know what he actually was because they say he earned a master's degree in guidance and counseling. (laughs) He was a principal. He graduated from Hofstra University School of Law. Um, He was a school guidance and residential counselor. Oh my gosh. He helped with the ice. I mean, they go on to just like, you know, he was so good. Look at him. He did all these humanitarian things. Um, You know, he he helped the baseball team and yeah creep extraordinaire yeah they don't include any of that in his obituary yeah but i mean let's be honest he was a he was either at the helm and calling the shots or he was a tool or his money was being used from being a principal oh yeah 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 okay well he went to jail so Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he was either at the helm or his money was driving all of it. Oh. it, I, it lit, I tend to believe that he was at the helm calling a lot of the shots because he was Terry Tickles. And Kevin is doing exactly what Terry Tickles did. And Jane O'Brien Media is doing exactly what Terry Tickles did prior to their inception. So that MO is his. I don't believe that. Unless he was a dupe. Could have been. Boom. Mind blown. Jesus. Well, rate. he's disgusting anyway. He went he went to that uh the Sundance Film Festival. Yeah. So even if Kevin's a dupe, I mean if you're in that deep where you're duped that deep, you've been brainwashed. I you know, the only thing you'd find under that is like a religion. And it's not over. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Kevin has created all, these things are still going on? Oh, yes. Kevin has created all of these websites trying to defame David Ferrier and his work, saying, 
you know, he did this. And he, I mean, just brings up how, all these crazy have you things. Been onto these websites? Yeah. And how far? I mean, do you have to go all the way to the end of the internet mm -hmm. to find one or? No. Is it, is it when you see, like, you can see the end, but you're not there yet? Or are they easy to find? Uh, they're pretty easy to find. He, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's making it his life's mission to, you know, defame the character of David Ferrier and Dylan Reeves for this That's one documentary. Scientology acts. Yeah. Or acted. Scientology's been detoothed. They, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Well, once South Park, South yeah. Park hit him. I mean, shredded him. And then yeah. Joe Rogan jumped in on it. I mean, you know, you'd think like this latest deal where they're going after Joe or Bernie Sanders because Joe Rogan liked him because Joe Rogan oh, yeah, yeah. doesn't like, you know, 32-year-old men becoming women and then beating up on women. You, you don't go after someone who's been honest for that many years. You just don't. You get, right. You get wrecked. Yeah. Someone, you know. But yeah. So yeah, it's a. I hope one day a creepy dude comes after me like that. It's an ongoing saga. I would like to test my metal in calling him a douchebag. And I don't know. I, I wonder what I'd do. There's going to be another movie called The Tickle King. And, and it's going to be about Kevin Clark with an E. <laughs> well, they will cover Kevin Clark with an E, but it's going to be about why, if David D'Amato was the only one at the center of this why didn't the harassment and the litigation stop with his death so that tells you it's much deeper There's because it's something. continuing yeah jane o'brien media even though they say they're not connected is somehow still connected so oh, there's other money what if you scratch deep enough and it goes right to epstein god hell because it's not about... And then you hear the conspiracy theories, like the ones about, you know, Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. and It's not about the fetish. It's about the power. I think you're right. It's about the power. It's about the money and the, and the power. The money to make the power, to create the power. Why can't people start an evil empire where, like, they save kittens? Right. I don't know. You know, I like the power. <laughs> I like having all these saved animals running free and yeah, no, no, it's always got to be some creepy dude that wants to tickling. harm other human beings. Who knew? Yeah. Tickling. It's a terrible thing. Stop it. Yeah, it's heinous. Again, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, the wild pod, the wild .com. Um, if you like, uh, the attire, uh, go on there. Betsy set up, a uh, shopping space little merch store yeah. you can get some t-shirts we're gonna add some mugs and other things um been trying to add every couple of days i'll put something new on there so check it out yeah yeah uh thanks for joining us have a great week yeah oh and if you can uh itunes give a review and a rating and uh interact with us come on the facebook tell us your stories or if there's something you want to see uh covered yeah. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week.